Hi, I'm Brandon Sweeney with Ascentium, and today we're going to learn how moisture affects 3D printing materials and the best practices for material handling to ensure your filaments are dry. Excessive moisture in thermoplastic filaments can cause both visible and invisible defects in printed parts. Bubbles and foaming are the most readily identifiable moisture-related defects. As filament is heated in the nozzle, any moisture present in the material expands rapidly into millions of microscopic bubbles. Uncontrolled voids in thermoplastics are considered defects that lead to unpredictable failure in finished parts. Here you can see the reduction in mechanical properties a part has when printed with wet filament. Even though high temperature thermoplastics like PEAK and PEI absorb very little moisture, the higher melt processing temperature results in a much greater expansion of the absorbed moisture into steam and causes just as many problems. Common indicators of wet filament are excessive stringing or a rough surface finish of printed parts. Dry filament should extrude with a smooth, consistent flow with no visible bubbles or hissing sounds. However, the only true way to know the state of the spool is to test it with a moisture analyzer. Some problems caused by moisture are invisible even to a microscope. Polycondensation polymers, including polyesters, polyamides, and polycarbonate, are susceptible to hydrolytic degradation. If the material is heated in the presence of excess moisture, the polymer chains are physically chopped into lower molecular weight segments. This has a dramatic negative effect on impact resistance, elongation at break, toughness, and strength. The vast majority of thermoplastic polymers used in material extrusion 3D printing are polar and therefore hygroscopic. Hygroscopic materials absorb water molecules from humidity in the air in a process called diffusion. The rate at which moisture diffuses into the polymer is governed by the material chemistry, the amount of moisture in the air, and the air temperature. The equilibrium moisture value is the maximum amount of water a material will absorb at a given relative humidity and temperature. Hygroscopic 3D printing materials can take anywhere from days to weeks to reach equilibrium moisture values. However, even trace amounts of moisture can cause serious problems when printing. Very hygroscopic resins like nylon and TPU can show visible signs of moisture in printed parts after being left out in a humid room for only 30 minutes. The exception to this is hydrophobic polymers like PVC, PVDF, polystyrene, and most polyolefins which are nonpolar based on their chemical structure and therefore do not absorb moisture. In most cases, hydrophobic polymers don't require drying. For hygroscopic thermoplastics, Moisture management is a critical step for any production technique that involves melt processing. In fact, the first step to extruding 3D printing filament from pellets is drying the material according to the resin manufacturer's recommended drying procedures. We use industrial hot air desiccant dryers that circulate hot and dry air with a dew point below minus 40 Celsius through the resin hopper. After the filament is extruded and wound onto spools, it's dried again before packaging to make sure it's completely dry. Then it's vacuum sealed with a desiccant pouch. A proper material handling procedure for your facility involves a few basic steps. When you receive new filament, keep it in the vacuum sealed packaging until you're ready to print with it. The most important step of any material handling procedure is to load dry material into a dry container for feeding into the 3D printer. A very economical solution for a dry box can be made by modifying a pelican case with a push fit connector and a Bowden tube, adding a pouch of desiccant and some roller wheels for the spool to sit on. For very moisture sensitive materials like nylon and TPU, we recommend adding a push fit valve that allows you to purge the container with nitrogen purchased from a welding supply store. The Ascentium HSE printer addresses this need by having airtight filament carts which plug into a desiccant drying manifold in the front of the machine. If a spool of filament is used quickly enough after being loaded into a dry container, then the process ends there. This is a sufficient quality control process for keeping material dry and will yield more consistent quality in prints. If the filament needs to be exchanged for another spool, it's best to leave the material in a dry container or transfer it to a dry storage cabinet for later use. Material left in a dry container for a period of weeks or months may still slowly absorb moisture that diffuses into the container, so it's best to re-dry the spool prior to use. Drying wet filament is typically accomplished in one of three ways. Hot air drying, 
desiccant air drying, or vacuum drying. Which method you choose depends on the level of drying quality needed in your industry and the budget you have for drying equipment. For low criticality applications like prototyping, where only cosmetic concerns apply, a convection oven may be sufficient to redry the filament. However, this is not best practice and it may lead to degradation of the polymer. A desiccant dryer is a better choice, however the process doesn't scale down very well so there's not a lot of equipment like this adopted for the additive manufacturing market. Another method for creating a diffusion gradient that drives moisture out of wet thermoplastics is pulling a vacuum on the heated filament. By evacuating the ambient air and evolved moisture from the filament, the driving force for diffusing moisture out of the material is maintained throughout the drying process. Vacuum oven drying of thermoplastics is the most effective method for quickly and gently removing moisture from filament. The main drawback is that vacuum drying requires an appropriate oven and vacuum pump combination that is typically more expensive than a standard convection oven. It's important to dry the material for the recommended time and temperature provided by the material manufacturer. Once a material is dry, it should be transferred back to the dry canister for feeding into the printer or placed in an appropriate dry container for later use. A hot oven is not an acceptable storage solution for spools of material. By implementing a material handling procedure that matches the requirements of your industry, we guarantee that you'll see better and more consistent parts coming off your printer. And if you'd like to learn more about this topic or our materials, head to our website at ascentium3d.com materials.